What's up? Welcome back. Week four now of the quarantine camp. Uh, it's maintenance Monday again. Hopefully you have a good amount of exercises in your arsenal and your workouts have progressed as much as this mustache. <laughs> on a serious note, hopefully you've been watching these videos, spending 20 minutes a day on joint health and have some simple exercises that you're practicing on a regular basis. Today, I'm gonna rant a little bit about another complex part of the human body, but I'll do my best to simplify things. That way you can learn a little something about anatomy and think outside the box when it comes to exercise and being healthy. You should get one of these. No, thank you. Do you even know what this is? It is a fitness orb and it has completely changed my life. Forget everything you thought you knew about ab workouts. That's right, today's rant is gonna be on the core. But I also wanna teach you a little bit about the spine because the two go hand in hand. So let's discuss the spine first. The anatomy and physiology of the spine is extremely complex. And I'm no orthopedic or neurosurgeon, but I have learned a few things and I wanna share. You have tons of nerves that travel from the brain down the spinal cord and branch off to everything in your body to deliver and receive fast messages. Lack of dedication to keeping proper alignment of the skeleton and having good mobility can compress on these nerves, disrupt the messages, and cause a wide range of problems. Your spinal cord is surrounded by 33 odd shaped bones called vertebrae. Between each vertebrae is a vertebral disc which acts as a shock absorber to deal with all the forces felt by the spine. The vertebrae are broken into five segments and each has its own natural curvature. Their role is protection of the spinal cord and to keep the trunk upright. There's a lot more that can be discussed with spinal anatomy, but remember, keep it simple. At the top, you have your cervical or C-spine, seven vertebrae that starts around the base of your skull to about the top of your shoulders, also known as your neck. Moving down, you have your thoracic or T-spine, 12 vertebrae that creates the majority of the trunk. Mobility in this area may help with shoulder and neck pain. Lower, you have your lumbar spine, five vertebrae that's commonly known as your low back. The complexity and overlap of the lumbar spine with the hips can lead to muscle imbalances, compression of large nerves like the sciatic nerve, and a sensation of pain. Next is the sacrum, which I've talked about before five fused vertebrae that meet up with the iliac bones of the pelvis to connect the spine to the hips at the SI joint. This area plays a major role in stability and is easily affected by heavy forces from high impact exercises. Lastly, you have your coccyx bone or your tailbone. The tailbone is small and fused together as well. It's four vertebrae. The small odd shape to the tailbone makes it highly susceptible to trauma and can also shift with the SI joint, causing pain. Even though it's complex, the spine needs to move, just like every other joint, and it should not be neglected. However, in order to use your spine properly and safely, you have to learn how to use your core properly. I want to share something with you that's changed my life. The core is not just sit-ups or crunches. And if you haven't read anything by Mike Boyle, I highly recommend taking the time to do so. In one of his books, he builds off of research to show this interesting approach to how the core works. And I personally follow these theories and it's worked for me and my fitness. To paraphrase and simplify it in my own understanding, here's 10 core muscles to think about. First, your rectus abdominis the ripping six pack that everybody wants. But this is only one layer of the core. It helps us with sit ups and crunches, but it also helps you draw in. Next is the diaphragm. I spoke briefly about the diaphragm in one of my midweek messages. This muscle is extremely important because it helps us breathe. The next muscle is the transverse abdominis or the TA. 
and it might be one of the most important core muscles we have because it can generate almost 360 degrees of tension to help stabilize the hips on the spine when we're performing high impact exercises. Two other muscles to think about are your internal and external obliques. These muscles help us rotate, but they also work in conjunction with the TA and the diaphragm when they're properly activated to brace and stabilize the spine even further. Moving deeper into the core, you have two important muscles to discuss, your psoas major and your psoas minor. Both help to flex the trunk, but the psoas major crosses over the hip and connects to the top of the femur. It helps with lateral rotation, hip flexion, and it also helps to stabilize the spine for posture. Another muscle that's in close proximity to the psoas is the iliacus. It connects from the pelvis to the top of the femur in the same spot as the psoas major. Together, these two muscles make up the iliopsoas, which is one of our most powerful hip flexors. However, it's in such close proximity to all the other core muscles and is involved in so many jobs that it's a common area of tightness and can be the culprit behind an anterior pelvic tilt and a whole variety of other problems. A collection of muscles that's often never thought about is your levator ani which is three muscles that make up your pelvic floor and work together to keep all your organs in your abdominal and pelvic area secured in place. Your quadratus lumborum, another deep muscle that's located on the posterior of your body or your back. It works just as hard as every other core muscle and is often neglected as well and can be another culprit behind pain. And lastly, the glutes, the powerhouse hip extensors. They play a major role in pelvic stabilization and our ability to brace and stay stable and fight off any outside forces that are trying to knock us down. Moral of the story, the core is a broad term for a team of muscles that all work together to help keep us stable and generate strength and power. Having a ripped six pack is attainable but it takes dedication to all the movements of the core, not just flexion. And it also takes a lot of focus on nutrition and many other components of fitness. Next, you'll find a collection of exercises and hit the core in the many different ways it was intended to work. Thank you.